around the room and and give Jonathan a few minutes to join us from wherever he's coming. So we are ready. Okay, we're recording. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, we apologize for whatever the glitch was that had us in two Zoom rooms, which is what the delay on the meeting start was, and we, we are trying to consolidate them. I'm Kathy Shane, I'm the chair of the committee, and we'll pull up the agenda in a moment, but um, one of the first things I wanna uh, do is, just, is go around the room to make sure um, everyone can hear and be heard. Um, we are conducting this meeting by Zoom and virtually, and we are recording the meeting. So you will be able to see a virtual meeting later, and we are posting these on our webpage. So I'm going to go around um, based on the people's faces that I can see on the screen just to have people say, yes, they're here and they can be heard. So I'll start with Paul Bachman. I'm here. Steve Schreiber. I'm here. Phoebe. I'm here. Uh, Rupert. I am here. Uh, ben. I am also here. Allison. Present. Anthony. Here. Dwayne. Here. Mike. Present. And Diane. Present. And I, th I think you said that um, Jonathan was in the other Zoom room, so I'm assuming that he will be joining us and we were told that Ben, uh, Sean Magnano is gonna be joining us late. So we, we have a quorum of the full committee. So I think we will start now. And Anthony, if you could just pull up the agenda so that everyone can see um, what we are um, trying to go through this morning. Um, we're gonna rep be reporting out on the MBA meeting on February 11th, which I think you all know because there have been a press release from the town. It was announced the school committee that we have officially been invited in to the feasibility study. And we can talk about what that means in terms of timeline. Um, the big point of business for today's meeting is to discuss and review the draft for the request for services for the owner's project manager, the project manager that we will be contracting with to assist the committee, uh, the building committee, as well as the school in designing and making key decisions on the school. Um, we do have a draft that was done by the subcommittee. Um, I'm anticipating that we may have some changes or suggested edits to this, so the committee We'll take notes on that and to get to a final draft. Um, then the next after that is to discuss the proposed timeline um, for the OPM selection and de key decision points and the roles of the subcommittee and the full committee in choosing the finalist, um, which will have to be done in a very um, telescope time if we want to make the June 7th board meeting uh, that for the MSBA, the panel that makes a decision on whether we're good to go with the selection of the OPM. And just for those in the subcommittee, um, when we were drafting it on the 11th of February, we heard the timeline on um, the earliest we could be in was June 7th, because some of the advance um, drafts we have to give to MSBA before we can go out and post the request. So you'll see in the draft, we've adjusted some of those timelines. And then the last, on, uh, given that timeline, there's some just suggested meeting dates for the full committee, but these are all in a suggested um, for discussion. So um, with that said, um, let me see whether uh, Jonathan has joined us yet. Jonathan and, and Sean are both joined us. Okay, so I think the, the, what we might wanna do is just um, Mike and or Paul, you were both at the MSBA meeting when we were invited in. If you wanna just give a quick summary of what we heard at that meeting. And then I've asked Jonathan, who is the chair of the subcommittee um, to walk us through some of the key parts of the draft, which are the goals um, that we're setting out for the off owner's project manager and um, the weights that we're giving. Uh, we, we have to say what we value in terms of the responses and the high scores will um, be invited for interviews and they become our finalists and they, it 
influences the decision making process. So Mike and or Paul, if you want to talk about what we heard on the 11th. Um, I, defer, I defer to Mike. Sure. Uh, I can be very brief. I know the, the point of the meeting is much more at the OPM level, but it was a very pleasant meeting. Uh, we were, uh, for a couple of reasons, we were first, so that always helps. Um, but uh, more seriously, uh, the MSBA noted um, that we'd completed all the tasks required uh, to be considered to enter the feasibility stage, um, which we'll talk very much about the rest of the meeting as the first step in that feasibility process around the OPM. Uh, I want to thank uh, Matt uh, from Ed DESI. He's the DESI rep on the MSBA. He, he made a point to, uh, to note that our buildings are in poor condition. He was really, he, he was definitely gave us great feedback, was very involved in the last project and just noted that he was really pleased to see us back again because he knows our staff and students really need uh, a different learning and working experience than what they currently have. Um, MSPA board, vote, board voted unanimously to support the project to move to the next phase. Uh, following that, there was a OPM module um, kind of orientation that a number of us attended as well that uh, I'm sure Kathy and others may go over in terms of the steps and process there, but it was really nice. I know a couple of us, Paul and Kathy for sure stayed on and got to see some other schools who were at the next stage, right? So they did all the feasibility entries, you know, three or four of us, and then they you know, we're able to see what it was like at the next phase where there's much more detailed design. And, and that was really, you know, uh, I, I found it really neat. Um, I think there was a lot to learn from uh, districts, even if it was a secondary school, just, you know, what they shared and, and their process. So that was really, you know, Paul, Kathy, um, Sean, I know you were there and others. Um, if there's anything you want to add, but that, that's kind of the quick summary of the meeting. Um, you know, it's like they vote and then right away you're whisked away to an orientation for the next phase. They're very efficient, which we appreciate. But uh, Paul, Kathy, others, anything I'm missing? Um, I, I think the only other thing is I did stay on for the module as did others. And when we got to the um, groups that were ahead in terms that they, they were starting to say their project and what they were doing, one thing of note is there was at least one net zero energy project in the, in the pipeline for elementary schools. So we will have other places to look outside of Amherst for what those designs are, um, you know, what they're thinking and, and um, there is more than one elementary school in the pipeline as well. So it's not, some of them were vocational schools and high schools, but there was um, one uh, elementary school that is just, it is basically just ahead of us, you know, like six months, seven months, not they were already putting a shovel in the ground. So I found that quite interesting. And then the um, thing that we had been warned, um, warned or cautioned by Mike is that there is a schedule that MSBA has and they come, they work with us every step of the way. So even on the draft of the request for services that we're about to review, that we're drafting, they wanna see that draft two weeks before it goes into a register to make sure that we've followed their template, that there's nothing um, that either that we're missing or that we did things that they, they have comments on. So that sets our timeline because then they want it to be out for a certain number of weeks for responses. And that means, what, and then they need our final selection at least a month before they take it to a panel. You know, so it's, it's each step of those things puts uh, several weeks of time in it that's out of our control. I mean, it's in our control that we have to meet that deadline, but then we have to wait. Um, so I think I'm going to turn at this point um, to Jonathan, who was chair of the subcommittee, and he and Anthony can pull the draft up, which we sent to everyone. And this is very much a draft. So um, I had a couple. We've had a couple. We've had a couple readers um, send in some notes. But anyone should send us in some notes on if they see things that aren't quite right, either in the um, background section or some wording they want clarified in later sections. So um, I'll, just, I'll do the just the Anthony, maybe we can scroll through so people can get a sense. There's just a basic introduction that was sort of more or less boiler, boilerplate on 
what we're doing. And then this background section, most of it was pulled from the original statement of interest um, that the school we submitted as a town, but it was updated to what we've done since that statement of interest and um, gave a sense of where we're going and including that we've done a space study in the middle school that determined there is enough room for the six feet to move up if we go in that direction. And so we do need to make sure all of these pieces are accurate. So all of this is the background for the, the bidders who are coming in and looking at this. Um, and I'm now gonna turn it over to um, Jonathan, where is when we started filling in what the goals are we see for the project and what weight we've assigned to various characteristics of the bidders. So Jonathan. Good morning. So oh, Anthony, yeah, why don't we start there? As Kathy said, a lot of this, uh, a lot of this document is is sort of pre-packaged uh, boilerplate that, that comes from the MSBA. Um, but there are parts that we can fill out and need to fill out. Um, and one of the, the the first and most important here, if Anthony scrolls up a little bit further, uh, is the, is the project objectives. Whoops, sorry. We'll get the sorry. Yeah, there you go. Um, You're seeing objectives, right? That's oh yes. Right I, I guess I was looking at the bullet point list oh, okay. because that yeah. that. I mean, I, I'm assuming we don't want to try to read out every word at, during this this uh, process yeah. today. Um, but uh, some of these uh, bullet points for project objectives, uh, Kathy noted, were, were pulled from other documents. But we we uh, tweaked this to some degree, and we tried to customize it for um, this project and for for our community. Um, and so it, certainly people should look at this and see if there are items that, that the subcommittee either missed or, um, or put too much emphasis on. Um, I'll, I'll pause for a moment. This is kind of one of our big, big sort of instruct not instructions, but it, it's one of our opportunities to tell the OPM who will work for us uh, what our what our what are what is important to us <laughs> as a community. Can I ask a question? Yes. Um, so dedicated space for music, computer, and special education. Um, why were music and computer sort of separately identified as opposed to like art and PE and other specials? Kathy, was that, did that bullet point get pulled from another document or maybe Anthony knows the answer to yeah, that Ant one? Uh, Ant Anthony may know because that was originally in Anthony's starting um, draft of this. I, th I think that particular bullet point came from the Fort River study. I think that phrasing, we talked about why we weren't calling out a gym and that was because a gym is part of the default, um, the default MSBA setup. Um, we did not discuss other art spaces. So maybe that needs an inclusion. I'm not sure. And I see Mike's Mike's hand up. Yeah, Mike. Uh, sorry, I uh, I can't. I can. I guess I can see the hands. The little hands go up on the screen. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I can do this thing too. Yeah. Um, so uh, just a question, a process question. I may have missed a couple of years ago because I was having little Wi-Fi challenges. Is this an opportunity to offer feedback as we go through the sections now, or from a process perspective, how would you like? You know, because on that particular point, I actually do have some feedback. But if if now is not the time, then I'm happy to offer it at a different time. I I would say that now is the time to offer feedback on this, and then we haven't scheduled, but we will schedule uh, another meeting of the subcommittee to go from draft what what is very much a draft to more final. So it's both now people should raise issues. We will take notes, and then. Um, share a revised draft with everyone and people can send in any notes on this because this is th this was done as Jonathan said using other documents other towns and then things that occurred to us and it may even need some wordsmithing to make it clear what we're talking about. Sure so uh, I'll offer two pieces of feedback then on the bulleted point that was raised um, the second one down I might suggest that we say dedicated space for um, special programs and special populations. Um, 
for instance, computers, a tricky one. My recollection the last time is that MSBA wasn't really supporting building computer labs for elementary schools because it's part of the project. Most people, you know, most districts go into Chromebooks and the idea of a lab, you know, instead of a maker space is a conversation we'd have to have. But I think keeping it more general, I think, you know, talks about, you know, instrumental music, right? And without getting into the specifics that may be misinterpreted. I think the other piece uh, is going to be the least popular comment I make, perhaps. Um, I just wonder under objectives, if we also include uh, a fiscal objective that, you know, I am aware, Sean would be really pleased with me. Uh, I am aware that there's multiple projects being considered. And so I think we want to do all these things, but just being explicit, because this is, again, trying to get an OPM who manage, one of their jobs is to manage cost control and you know, how many changes there are. I don't have all the language, Jonathan, Rupert, others do, and Steve, uh, but just something about um, that we want to, you know, we want these things, but we also want to be realistic about the cost of the town as well as the MSBA. So I don't know if that goes here or not, but it just said project objectives. And I think one of the project objectives, I think, has to be, you know, delivering all those, you know, having all those deliverables happen and the town still being able to function financially. So uh, I don't know if it's worth putting there, uh, that's up to the group, but for me, you know, it just seemed like it was missing. Well, I'll give you a, a reaction. I think it is definitely worth putting in. And we had an example from one other town um, that had, um, you know, cost effectiveness, you know, d doing what is needed, but, but being um, really paying attention to the cost so we can, uh, Anthony, you can put a placeholder there and we can wordsmith it, but it's a, in a cost-effective way um, while, while controlling costs, yeah. Kathy, I see another hand up. Okay. Rupert. Yeah, I'm gonna try to figure out how I can see hands. Um, Rupert. Yes, uh, I think I'm unmuted. Um, uh, one of my concerns, of course, going forward with the new building would would be the maintainability of the building. Um, and that may be reflected in the bullet point that says life cycle costs, um, or maybe it needs to be pulled out specifically. Um, I've seen a lot of, especially high-end, uh, low energy buildings have extremely complex, uh, difficult to maintain systems. Uh, and I think there needs to be some kind of a balance to keep uh, keep the building maintainable. Okay. I, I would say that I think that is the intent of that that bullet point, but we can we can uh, at the subcommittee look at that and figure out if there's a way to, to, to frame that a little better. Thank you. Kathy, I can't raise my hand because I'm a host. Um, so in terms of like smaller editorial comments, just put those in writing and send it to the committee. Is that your request? Yes, ab absolutely. Okay. And you know, either write on the document or in an email to us, either way, whichever way is easiest to you. And I think we, if we didn't, we can send you the Word document and you can plunk in a comment bubble if you don't have exactly how you want to word it. Um, Got it, thank you. Everyone should have the Word version, right? That was yep. sent out. Mm -hmm. yeah. This question I think is more for um, Anthony, is the, the bullet point on compliance with the town's wage theft bylaws, is that meant to cover both of those, the two that we looked at? Um, one that was more focused on sort of construction and then the other one? Uh, that was meant to be kind of all encompassing, yeah. Okay. I, I didn't really wanna go into a long discussion here as so much as this should prompt someone to look into what those bylaws are. Mm -hmm. Maybe have thing, a link, maybe we'll have a link to it, I don't know. One th thing people should just know, on my screen, I've got the faces going down. If I try to put the hands go up, I can't necessarily see them. So if anyone sees hands up, just please tell me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kathy, if you open the participants window and you have another window yeah. open, you should be able to see the whole list of attendees. And I can, and then I can't see, um, well, uh. maybe I can make it smaller. I, it just, I can't, then I can't see the text, but that's fine, I, I've got okay. it. Right. Would it be too disorderly if people just spoke up like I just did? I, I don't mind if people yeah. just speak up. So because we don't want to move through this when people haven't had a chance to read. You know, one of the questions I asked was auditorium space. So the same way people just um, called out special programs. If we call out an auditorium space, I think it says that we definitely want one in the school. Um, and I'm, I'm certainly not a 
uh, against that, but I just think that that there should be some agreement that we do. Um, I grew up in a grade school that we use the um, gym and the gym and it was a what did you call it, Steve? Uh, gym auditorium, <laughs> you know. There gym was, cafetorium. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, we had something that gym cafetorium in, in two <laughs> ways, but you know, so it, it's it's things like that that I I think we set these as goals and objectives, but we are somewhat saying what the content of the building will be at the, this point too. Yeah. This doesn't necessarily lock us into any particular configuration right. of the building, but right. it is a communication of the community's goals. Right. If folks have, uh, feel like they've, they've, uh, given the comment they want to give, we, we could move on, but I don't want to rush I, things. Yeah, I just have one other comment, Jonathan. Is yeah. the creation of a net zero energy building, is that is the Northeast Collaborative for High Performance Schools, is that redundant? No, these are these are a, a series of, of different options that the, that the MSBA uh, requires. You, I believe, at least my, my memory from the Fort River process was that uh, you, have to pick one of these um, to comply with, uh, or the designer has to comply with as they're moving the project forward. Um, and that, you know, net zero is really, that's a town requirement that's sort of on top uh, of that. And so I, I, I think there's value to, to having all three items um, while they all get at a greater uh, interest in, in uh, sustainability, um, it's, it should be prudent. In fact, I think that point on the the chips and the and the lead that that language I think is straight out of out of the uh, the boilerplate plate part of the the document. Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you. And, and there was some discussion about whether or not creation of a net zero energy building. So whether or not that should just state um, net zero ready or something like that, because you can't measure net zero until the building's operating. So you don't know if you've created it until after it's done. Yeah, I think we should probably talk a little bit at the, the subcommittee level about yeah. whether or not we have the right, the right well, language. Yeah, I think In the end, we're gonna have to expound um, as a committee and a town significantly on, on what those goals are and both the OPM and the, and the designers will have to uh, work with the bylaw as it's written. Right, I think the bylaw does have that test to see about performance. So good, thank you. Anthony, let's scroll down to four if we could. Um, so the, the next section as it says is minimum requirements and evaluation criteria. Uh, some of this is boilerplate and there's other areas where we've edited it. Um, and I will do my best to remember which, which sections are which and, and where we made edits. Um, but I, I would uh, freely uh, uh, welcome my subcommittee members uh, pointing out stuff that I may miss as I'm going through here. Um, those first two boiler, uh, uh, bullet points are pretty much boilerplate. I don't think we edited the length of time uh, for either or the experience levels for either of, of the two bullet points. Um, they seemed reasonable to us. The next section that starts with the owner, uh, that is the section we added. Uh, the standard document um, does not speak to um, minority business enterprises or women business enterprises. And while the town does not have a specific goal, uh, we felt it, it would be um, good for, for OPMs to, to, to work to discuss how they can be inclusive in, in what they bring to us in the way of services. Um, scrolling down a bit to evaluation criteria. I should probably uh, back up and, and just talk briefly about in, if folks were look, had, had a chance to look at the, the samples that, that Steve was able to find from um, other communities, they, most of them had a, a point category, a way, you know, a way to kind of grade people on their responses. And so we have a list of evaluation criteria that we're proposing to you know, judge the, the applicants against. And then we have a weighted um, maximum number of points that, that 
uh, folks can achieve for each category. Um, and so while we did use some of the documents that we looked at as guidance, we also made some of our own judgments on the, the points and therefore the weight that we thought and you know, the importance as it were that we thought a certain thing uh, held. And obviously we wanna look both at the, um, the criteria, but also the weighting. Uh, and again, you know, folks can, folks can tell us today uh, in this format, uh, what, what they see, what they like or don't like, but we can also gladly take comment, uh, as Kathy said, via email. Uh, so- uh, can, I, can I make a comment before yep, go ahead, we start Steve. here? So this is related to the previous stated goal of really encouraging women and minority participants. So, um, which I- The other I, direction. Yep. So, but this is going to be a comment regarding the whole thing. So we just had a, um, speaker as part of the architecture lecture series, who's from Minneapolis. And he made a comment that really has resonated with me that um, if you have the criteria in RFPs, so he used an example of a uh, performing arts, like a theater in Minneapolis and they issued an RFP, you must have done two other theaters. So he responded that no black architects in Minnesota have been able to do a theater so therefore, by that very criterion, you have eliminated the possibility of um, a black owned architecture firm responding to this RFP. So I, I hope that we'll look at all of these points that we have and all of these criteria that we have through that lens that who are, are we eliminating the possibility of diversity um, by having criteria that or, or by having a point system that might have a, you know, sort of a subtle, um, you know, uh, 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 bias like that in it. So I'm only mentioning, I didn't mention this to the subcommittee because he literally just spoke, you know, at our school, but I thought that really resonated with me. And I just want to ask a question on this um, to show my, uh, uh, ignorance of OPM versus the designer and the architect roles here. At the point we're choosing a project manager, we haven't we haven't yet chosen the architect and the designer. Although we're we're setting the stage for all of that. So, do some of those concerns you've just raised, Steve, particularly come in when we we are picking um, the group that's actually going to design the building for us? Absolutely, it'll come into play then also. And yeah. so uh, we should just, I would suggest that we just be really careful as we look through all of these points to consider whether or not there's an implicit, you know, slanting of our requirements towards, you know, something. So, so the thing I hear from by looking at this is that we sort of rank, rate value everything about the same. Everything gets five points. Yeah. There are a couple that get 10 points. And it seems like, um, that doesn't really establish what our highest priorities are other than the ongoing maintenance and knowledge of net zero um, as, as because they get twice as many points as everything else. And I just wonder if, if we tr truly do value everything the same that putting together a website is as important as knowledge of the uh, state building code or whatever it is. I'm not sure which, which would have more importance to us, but it seems like, you know, just a lot of, of, of small things here that, um, are there any things that we think are really hyper, hyper important that we really need to give a lot of points to that we care a whole lot about? And I would, you know, I, I don't have an opinion on that, but just wondering if we should be communicating to the response, to the people responding, what we're really concerned, care about. Well, certainly at the subcommittee level, the, the ones that, that got the 10 points were ones we, we were, we were valuing a little bit more than others. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean we hit the right, um, the, the right note, uh, but kind of management, the ability of the OPM. So stepping back a second, what does the OPM do? The OPM represents us uh, and works for us. Um, and their, now I'm speaking for me personally, their ability to communicate for us and to us and with the designers and with the community um, 
that that's something that seems very important to me. Um, likewise, the the uh, having the knowledge about it, how to get to a net or at least try to get to the net zero mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, requirements uh, seemed important. Um, but others may value other items. And, and just one other thing I th thought through, um, they, they, Jonathan and Steve had come with two possible ways of weighting this. One is just the straightforward you're seeing here. And one, another was extra weights. Like if you were extraordinary on something, you got double the count. But if you look through this, the capacity and skill, the knowledge and the team you're bringing to us, if you add those three together, it's a lot of weight. Um, so that you've done this before, you're bringing a team we really like um, and and they've got enough time to do it, their dedicated time. And then that capacity and skill thing, we've given a lot of emphasis to what team are you proposing to us and what knowledge do they have and what evidence do we have that they've done a good job in the past? The other they're, thing. Yeah, they're heavily weighted in the yeah, cluster yeah. of pieces. The other thing I would say is that although in one sense items like knowledge of the building code and knowledge of procurement laws are extremely important, in another sense they're also kind of basic expectations and, and rather low bars yeah. to clear. So even though even though items five through five and on might not matter if you don't have item two, it's also our expectation that everyone who inquires is going to clear number two pretty pretty easily. So, 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 anyway, so, so if we're going to differentiate them, having a bigger point spread somewhere else. So you could, or the other way you could say it, Anthony, is you could lower the points you're giving for two because everyone's going to mm -hmm. get them um, and, <laughs> and, and put it back down. At one point, financial stability was only given a three, and then we realized we were two points short of 100. <laughs> so we gave two more points, um, you know, just to, to be uh, rounded back up. But we could look at those again and say, if we really think they're, they're not going to, if they're not a viable company, they're not going to be make the cut either. So we could lower points and redistribute a few points to make more of a differentiation would be one possibility. I think Mike Morris has his hand. Mike. Yep. Um, so I, I think that's right. I agree with all the comments that I heard. And I think the thing to just for people who haven't been through a process like this before, um, is this is really good to find the package by which we evaluate them, right? So most of the people on the call, I have to, some of the people on the call, we have a lot of architects in this call, aren't going to be able to answer and evaluate number two, right? Um, so I think, you know, the point thing, point differential for me, I'm not gonna weigh in on what should or shouldn't be how many points. It's really gonna define where the potential applicants put their, put their work. So if there's more points for familiar with net energy zero building projects, we can then expect that all the architects, whether they've done one or not, are gonna invest a lot of resources into describing how they would approach that. So I think, you know, the points piece, uh, you know, I would, in general, you are gonna probably find lots of qualified people to do this role. And so I think that the advantage of being more to Paul's point of being more clear on the points is that's really gonna define and let the potential applicants know they really care about net zero bylaw. We're gonna put a lot of time, we're gonna put our, our green person onto you know, really doing a lot of work. And, and I think it's a signal that's important um, more than actually the, the points and how they get calibrated because likely there's going to be people who are really solid. All the people are really to your points made, or we're going to be really solid on, on some of the core pieces. So I think that's the reason to be more clear uh, and make sure they align. I just want to say this for the general group is that it actually defines the, the presentation and the packet that each of these potential vendors uh, creates. Um, and I think if they don't have much experience, for instance, I'm picking on the net zero one because it's the one that's in the middle of my screen that says 10 points, then it's going to stand out like a sore thumb. Right, or, um, and so I think that's more than just how they all add up together. That's its own thing, but I think it's much more a signal so that the packets we get are consistent with the values that the committee has. I see Steve's hand is up. Steve, is that? Um, yeah, no, that's yeah. a, um, 
Yeah, so I'm going to make a slightly counter. Well, I'm going to make a and I, I know that I'm I'm also on the subcommittee, so I have a voice there. Um, if I run the zoo, I would move as many things up into minimum requirements as possible, and then leave the evaluative criteria, the ones with points, to those ones that we really think are important. So there, we've already talked about things that we think are baseline. Of course, you have to know the building code. Of course, you have to. You know, and I quite frankly, you have to know um, 8A because that's in the template, right? So if you're working with schools, then you have to know that already. But there are other things that I think that are, are immeasurable. In Amherst, the ability to work with a complex, you know, with a very engaged community, you know, that's kind of critical. In other words, um, you, and that's not, so for me, I would give many more points on a, a proven track record of working with a diverse community that wants to be very engaged in projects like this. Um, that would be something that I, 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 you know, I've talked about diversity, about how I think that's also very important for this to, you know, to send a message through the, um, the people that we hire as consultants that we're committed to, you, you know, diversity, I, I, I would give more points to that. So, that would be my suggestion is to put as much as we possibly can up into minimum requirements and then uh, leave the points for for things where we can really express our values. Yeah. I don't think that's an option to us, unfortunately. Um, okay. To, to change the minimums, I don't, you know, they so, said they- So here's, they said another, here's another thing that, um, my most direct experience working with an OPM is on the construct, design and construction of the design building at UMass. So at the time that that building was being considered, we did not know that that was going to be a timber frame, mass timber building. So nothing about mass timber was written into the OPM criteria or into the designer selection criteria. So that all changed during design development where both the OPM and the architects had to quickly become experts in mass timber construction. What everyone knows about that building now is that it's made of mass timber. That was zero points on the OPM and zero points for the, for the um, architect. What was critical in both the OPM and the architects was the ability to pivot. So the, basically to have the flexibility to uh, learn about a completely different construction system. So that's another criterion that I think is critical is this ability to, to learn, to, to, to know, to, um, you know, to pivot. So even net zero. So I think that most OPMs and most architects can become well-versed in what the, those, how one achieves net zero, you know, fairly quickly, whether or not they've actually had that direct experience. So, Anthony, can I just ask on the minimum, are you, I know we can't get rid of any of the minimum, but what Steve was suggesting is adding some things to minimum. You think we can't add to minimum? I don't, I don't think so because like we, we expanded some of these evaluation criteria, but most of them were already here in the evaluation criteria rather than minimum. Okay. So I, yeah, uh, so I don't, I don't think so. I mean, our instructions in that conference call were to not mess with anything that wasn't specifically highlighted as something we were supposed to fill in. So then Steve- Like, like honestly, honestly, I'm not even sure about adding this here. Like we debated where it really belonged in the document. Oops, where it really belonged in the document and I'm not- Well, that is, you know, they get this two week period to re review our draft. Yeah. But, but then, then to if we want to respond to what Steve's suggesting, it would be to lower the points in the evaluation and redistribute points is the way of strongly sig signaling signaling this. Correct? Yeah. If we need to keep a particular category, even though we think it's um, more or less minimum, they're not going to be applying if they don't have it. Yeah. Okay. I, I can uh, see that Sean has his. Yeah, Sean's, his hand, Sean's up. hand is up. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, this is just a more of a functional comment, um, sort of based on the evaluation criteria. If you're allowed to, I would suggest, and, and maybe I missed it, maybe it's already in there, but I would suggest putting something later in the document that says the um, the submissions that you get from the OPMs will clearly 
identify where this information is in their package. Um, one of the things that's always been a challenge in evaluating OPMs and architects is trying to find, you know, you're, you're looking through the document and spend lots of time just trying to find how you can evaluate these criteria. And so if you can get them to submit it in a way where it's clearly marked, you know, number one, here's our information. Number two, here's our information. Um, it'll make the process that you guys have to do for evaluating it much cleaner and, and more straightforward. Um, so, yep, go ahead, Anthony. So Thank everyone you, is going, so everyone is going to submit the, the state form the designer selection form, mm -hmm. which uh, pretty which is, which is pretty restrictive, uh, and it lays out exactly how they're going to. Yeah, I'm talking about some of the ones like their approach to you know up above. There's things about how they're going to their approach to doing something or information on net zero. Um, those types of things won't be on this form, or at least not their approach to how they're going to do them. Yeah, there should be a section at the end of the of uh, the the state form. Uh, for architects, it's typically a maximum of six pages where you're, you're supposed to address the evaluate, you're supposed to address specifically the evaluation criteria. Um, I don't know if it's six pages in this one because I, 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 I didn't look at that end of it, but I'm sure it's of some form of that is there, Anthony, correct? Yeah, you know, that would be anything you can do to make it yeah, as, as um, straightforward as you can um, for comparing it will be good because I just know the last time around, Three a lot of time just kind of searching for things. Yeah, three double-sided uh, letter-sized sheets. Is this what you were talking about, Jonathan? Yes, that is yeah. that is that is the spot. Okay, good. Yeah, I, I would expect that most of, or well, not most, but much of our evaluation is going to be based upon the information placed there, uh, because a lot of the the rest of the response will be somewhat boilerplate. Just as much of this is boilerplate. Do others have additional uh, criteria or additional comments on the evaluation criteria? I think we've had some some good feedback, and it'll be a good opportunity for us to revise it at the subcommittee level. Jonathan, um, this is Mike. I just wanted to note that um, Rupert and I both have a meeting at nine thirty. When the meeting time was changed, okay. it, it bumped into it. So I don't. I'm not pushing Rupert. He already shared some feedback, but just we will be departing at nine thirty. And just wanted to communicate it wasn't because we not committed, but with the time change, we just couldn't change our nine thirty meeting. Yep. Well, you know, I, I, you know, Paul with uh, Mike. With that said, um, I think you should definitely then send comments, you know, and we will bring them into the committee and we will make bring them in as a public document so that it's um, when you get a chance to focus on this and and we will commit to this is first draft, there will be second draft before it's final. So we'll figure out some way of did we address uh, concerns before it before it leaves the town, <laughs> you know, goes into somebody else's mailbox. Yep, <laughs> that'd be great. And I think maybe even with the minor edits when they get cleaned up, if we send it to the full committee, you know, I know Rupert and I will get back to you in a timely, timely manner. So um, maybe Anthony just uh, go next to the um, the timeline on all of this. Yes. Right. So, th so this does not reflect the information we received at the last, at the meeting after our last subcommittee meeting. These are the old dates. Okay, so uh, the one I think I sent everyone, I went and changed those dates, but that's fine. Um, you know, so these have the old dates in them, but now the, the target date is June 7th um, in terms of the, the, the panel date is June 7th, sorry, that's the date. So working backwards from that, um, the earliest we would know for sure we're in is June 7th and they need to, a month before that is where they get who we've selected. <laughs> and when you go back to the very beginning where it says it appears in the register, they need the draft two weeks before it goes into the register. So, you know, so that's, that's what moves then this timeline and then it has to be out for at least two weeks. So that, that's the, the, the schema that we've been put into um, that's responding to them. Um, so in, in between that, it's respondents come back to us. We do an evaluation of them. We select a short list 
we do interviews, and then we select a finalist. So the question here is when what piece comes back to the full committee versus the subcommittee? So I, I will so just- So just on this timeline, so we have to have this, the R, RFS finished by in two weeks. It has to, it, the RFS has to be, this timeline can't, it, they have to have our draft two weeks before it goes into the register. That's tomorrow, right? Right. So, so when, when, when we were listening in on February 11th and I verified this, I asked them a question. They said the earliest Amherst is going to come to a panel is June 7th. And it was because their timeline has um, them for the June 7th, um, the ad would go in no later than March 25th, but they had to have it two weeks before. And if you wanted to be on the um, earlier, the May, the May 11th, the May 3rd fall. So, ad, yeah, so, so my, just, my, my, my question is, uh, do we have to have the RFS ready by March 3rd? Is that the, is that, that's my question. No. No, no. they um, the, under under the timing for June seventh, the um, it, two weeks before Mar uh, the twenty fifth. So uh, subtract fourteen days from twenty five. So right. it, we have a little bit more time than that. Okay, I just I just changed them to the dates in your PDF, Kathy. Perfect. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. Okay, so so it's it, yeah, and and so for, that's what it actually comes out in the register. You have to do it a few days before before them to post it, and mm -hmm. then they want it yeah, two weeks before. Them. Okay, and and I said, you know, if we can get it to them earlier, we can post it earlier. Mm -hmm. This is this is a deadline if we want to get to, mm -hmm. to June seventh. So, um, if we're ready in a week, they will review it as soon as we're ready. Um. And give us a go ahead to go ahead and post it, which would give us a little bit more time in the timeline to get the responses back and evaluate them. So we could we could look at our own, you know, what's possible for us to do a selection process that makes sense. And that was, I think, Anthony. That was the news we got on the eleventh on that mm -hmm. they. They, they needed a full two weeks to review our draft. Um, so we, we couldn't just, we could, we could try to move really fast, but we couldn't move fast enough. And then the rest of that section is pretty much all boilerplate. So just, I, I don't think we have to make a decision right now, but when we when we look at the next time we would meet as a full committee, um, uh, it's the, at what point in the, um, everyone can get a revised final draft um, before it goes out. And then it's a question of, in the selection process, when we're down to three, um, on interviews, Mike is a, is either waving goodbye or are you waving goodbye? So I am. Yeah, Rupert and I do need to get another call. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Appreciate it. But we'll follow up as as indicated uh, with the revised draft and offer any feedback we have. Okay. And future meetings will be at seven thirty. We'll make we'll we'll make we'll make the posting in time. <laughs> oh yeah, no, and I don't have a preference. It was just that I already we both had already had another meeting scheduled. You know, if it works better to be later for folks, that that's sort of arbitrary to me. Of just this week, this time I couldn't. Uh, couldn't un couldn't change a meeting that was already set. Okay, so maybe Anthony, I think you could take this down at this at this point. Um, and so the, the sort of the the scheduling meetings for the full committee. Um, and I and certainly if people 
want to be, we, we will schedule another meeting, at least one more meeting for the drafting committee, the full committee. Um, the process would be, we get to a full draft, it goes, it goes in for review, then it gets posted, then we start getting responses back. We're sitting down and assigning evaluation criteria, doing background in, uh, reference checks and interviews. So at what point are we doing which things at a full committee level was my question. We didn't, we didn't have an answer to that in the subcommittee. Any suggestions or thoughts? I would suggest that um, it be at the subcommittee level, but be prepared to open it up to all committee members and post as a committee of the whole. Okay. That way, if, you, if people who don't wanna participate in that level don't have to, but if people do, they have the option. Okay. The document as written assumes that the OPM subcommittee will be the ones doing evaluations and reference checks and yeah and, and such. Well, uh, I that, was just... that was true. It was more at the final selection mm -hmm. point when we're down when we're down to our top two, top three. Yeah. So does that mean that the subcommittee will evaluate and do interviews, but then the decision will go to the full committee? Well, I'm just I'm I'm asking. That's a, I'm raising that as a question. Hmm. I'm just raising it as a question. And Paul, I think, was saying we could do everything at the subcommittee level, but invite everyone in to be part of those key decision points. Sean uh, and hand Sean's hand is up. Yeah. Um, sorry. I think so. I think it's sort of a combination of what you both are saying. I think the subcommittee does it all and does the short list. And then at some point, you know, uh, explanation of that short list of the full committee, you know, why was this the number one would probably be helpful for the full committee, you know, explaining what separated them from the, the other ones. And, and, you know, and one of the things they said in our briefing on the module was when we, when we submit our choice, we're supposed to do a full narrative of why we gave the points we gave what the interview was like, what we heard in the interview, a narrative thing. So they want documentation that we went through these different pieces. So we, we will have to do that in any case. So it's, that would be something we can be preparing both for the full committee, but it's something we have to prepare when we, when we go and say, here's our selection. They want a full narrative report. And they said they will turn it back if it doesn't have that. <laughs> so they, they, they encourage us to take good notes. Um, any other thoughts on this? Because it, it, it does, it, um, we can kind of think this through on when we would next meet as a full committee then. Um, you know, the, 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 everything will be much more active in terms of the full committee once an OPM is, when our office, the owner's project manager is on board and there's gonna be some waiting time once this uh, uh, is out. But I think we could be talking about what the steps in the process are gonna be so we can set a date for March um, and set another date for April if, if people are ready to do that now um, or I can send out potential dates. <laughs> you know, the we would, we would need to have a full draft in by the middle of March to make the deadline. So we could do a Wednesday in the middle of March date at uh, 7.30 in the morning is the next time the full committee meets would be my suggestion. And to be more specific, that would be the 17th of March. <laughs> The 17th of March is the next full committee meeting? Ne that would so be next full committee. By then I would expect we have a full draft and we may have already submitted I, it. Oh, okay. So, so we wouldn't, so we're not looking for the full committee to approve the final draft then. We'll let the subcommittee do that. Um, if that's all right with everyone, um, can we, you know, with the open meeting law, if we do a second draft and we submit it and get comments back from people and then discuss it at a full committee, um, if the comments just come in, I think we can get to a final draft that way, unless people want to review a full draft as a full committee. I'm, I'm looking for 
hands up any any response to that yes paul i think the full committee should sign off on the rf on the full draft okay then we would need to meet on march 10th can i i would love to do it even earlier i would love to i would love to be able to start our timeline earlier and have this out in the wild for longer then march 3rd uh, if we march could, if we could Anthony? if we could if we could do that, if we if we approved the final draft on March third and submitted it to MSBA that day, got it in got it in the register, you know, March twenty fourth or even or March twenty second or. Um, okay, so then the question is, can like so the subcommittee will need to meet? Um, today's the seventeenth. We can't meet before um, Monday, Monday in terms of posting, but we would need to meet. Monday to get to uh, a final draft to have, um, or, or at least that week. So you're saying, that, so then a full committee meeting on the third um, is where you're pushing for, Anthony? Or I, I would, I would like, I would like that. Like we could, we can't, we can go later, and we'd be okay to go later. But given the option, I'd love to have this, I'd love to have this posted with a response deadline of a month instead of two weeks. You know, give so people... how, how do, do everyone on subcommittee, are you okay for meeting next week um, and getting to final? And if we need to, we could post two meetings next week, you know, beginning of the week and end of the week. And if we only need one, um, then, then we're done. And that, that, does that work? And then March 3rd would be posted as a full committee meeting. Is that all right with everyone? Yes? Mm -hmm. I don't see anyone saying no. I don't think anyone's, and no hands are up. <laughs> Dwayne, does that work for you, subcommittee? Dwayne's on our subcommittee too. Okay. Okay. I think I asked a clarifying question. Yeah. So maybe Anthony, so what happens to walk me through the process is people submit their proposals, you, you gather them, the subcommittee reviews them to see if they meet the, to do two things. One is to see if they meet the minimum requirements and then mm -hmm. ranks them. Yes. Subcommittee interviews all applicants or selected highest ranking uh, it, applicants. It, it, it selects its shortlisted applicants, which must be at least three. And then those three are interviewed. Yes. Subcommittee ranks those interviews, mm -hmm. comes to the full committee with saying, here's the person we think should be put for here's the group that we think should be put forward and msba also has a has their own people in there i'm not actually a hundred percent sure uh how the fun the the document itself plays some of this out um yeah i, I just read the document i didn't i didn't feel there was clarity on that piece yeah. of it enough so i guess um, the question to the, the, the larger group here is, are we comfortable with all that work being done by the subcommittee or do does the larger group want to have us say and be part of, and that's what, that was what I brought up on the interviews. Do you want to make that a committee of the whole or not? Or are we comfortable with the subcommittee carrying that load? It's a, it's a lot of, it's a lot of work. Um, so it's, I'm laying it on the subcommittee is good by me, but um, just want to make sure we're, no one feels disenfranchised by the process. Um, so if we meet on March 3rd, we can reopen that question again, Paul. Okay, so the, other, the other thought I had is having heard all of this for that next stage, we could make a slightly larger subcommittee or bring someone else on if we really you know, wanted to make That's sure someone was in yeah. the room. Um, but the, there is, there's, uh, there are key time points. The so one of the piece would be there's background um, reference checks where we'd be calling people. Um, you know, who have worked, worked with the LPM team in the past. So once we get to the, the short list, we would be doing those as well. Yeah. Um, I would be, you know, I, I would be happy to take all comers as far as who wants to participate in interviews and, and look at the, look at the shortlisted finalists. But my strong preference would be that anyone that wants to be involved at the end should probably be involved in the whole process. Like, receiving the initial applications and reading them and 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 hearing the feedback from from references like coming in coming in just to do the interviews i think would would be would be a difficult i think it would be worse for that person than to if they were involved at the start mm -hmm. yeah not in drafting the rfs but at least in getting the responses 
No, I agree with that. And so that's just, uh, you know, whether Ben, Mike, Paul, any of you who aren't on the subcommittee want to be there at the beginning and seeing some of this, um, we, we can make that decision on March 3rd, but, but that is uh, that we will have the time to make that decision. And then we can certainly hold these as committees of the whole at key points, um, but it, not, not as Anthony said, reading all the documents. Is there anything else? Um, I'm, I'm gonna open it up for public comments um, if the committee doesn't have any other comments. I don't see any. Um, so I think we are now open. We do have uh, four people. Um, any of you who would like to make public comments, please uh, raise your hand. And please know that you can also send us comments by email. Um, when, and the subcommittee, when we're looking at the draft, will be taking those into account as well. I'm not seeing any hands up. I'll give it another minute. Uh, no, I don't see anyone indicating public comments. So I think we're, I think we are finished with the agenda. We have, we will send out a meeting notice and we'll make sure we get it posted in time for March 3rd, 7.30 in the morning um, for a full committee meeting. And we will post um, our subcommittee meetings for, for the draft you've just seen and revisions that people have already remarked on and or um, some that have been sent to us we'll be discussing them as a subcommittee. Um, I think if I don't see anything else, I think we have completed our business for today. Um, I don't see any hands up. Uh, move to adjourn. Then um, I, there's a move to adjourn. Is everyone okay. in agreement? All right, just raise your hands. We're ready to go. Thank you all. Thank you all for joining Thank us. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Enjoy Vermont. Thank you. Right?